In the presidential campaign, there are two Americas. A huge demographic divide between those backing Barack Obama and Mitt Romney. And a look at the news media from the perspective of the average American. I'm Frank Newport, Gallup Editor-in-Chief. I'm Susan Page, Washington Bureau Chief for USA Today. And this is Election Matters. Well, Susan, I shamelessly stole the headline from USA Today in the little intros that we just did. In the presidential campaign, there are two Americas. This is your uh, cover story on USA Today on Monday. It comes from our swing states poll, where we uh, interviewed uh, voters in 12 states that we identified as, as key states that could go either way, at least in theory. And the idea behind the headline was... Most uh, voters in the swing states have seen TV ads, positive and negative, for Obama and for Romney. And most voters in the non-swing states have not, because both campaigns are really focusing all their fire on the 12 or so states that really count. So what we're saying here about two Americas is if you're living what, like in Rhode Island, right, or Massachusetts or in Mississippi, uh, which are strong states on one side or the other, you're just not seeing a lot of these TV ads. But if you're in Ohio or Florida, these other states, uh, particularly those two, because I think they're getting the most money, you're just getting barraged, right? And the, the ads didn't start earlier this time than they have in the past, but they are more intense. There's no summer let up. Uh, we figure in the next month, the two sides will spend about $100 million on ads in these states. Boy, that's their own stimulus package, right? <laughs> if you own a local television news station right now, it's just uh, gravy, right? The money's yeah. just pouring in in those swing states. That's, right. that's the place to be right yeah. now. Um, Obama's ads seem to be more effective, at least in terms of recall, by voters than Romney's. People remember seeing them more. And, you know, we also saw them having a bigger effect. Voters often don't like to admit that ads change their mm -hmm. mind, but 8% of the registered voters we talk to in the swing states say the ads change their views of the candidates. And of those, 76% are backing Barack Obama, just 16% Mitt Romney, which indicates that the Obama ads are having a real effect in pulling voters back to him. At least on a small enough group, but in swing states, by definition, small groups could make the difference. You know, we've got a two-point race in the swing states mm -hmm. now, so it's all on the margins. The negative ads were more likely to be remembered than positive. That's for both candidates, right? That's right. Which is true, is it not? If you're there, there's more negative than positive coming through your TV set. There have been many more negative ads there than mm -hmm. positive ones. You mentioned two points uh, in our swing states. Obama's ahead by two points. Over the same period of time, he was ahead by four. Four, um, in the national polling. But when we look at the last three weeks all thrown together, Obama's ahead by two points as well. So he's actually edging a little ahead in these huge, massive samples we do. And we talked about at the outset uh, looking at these subgroups, and boy, this is the same headline, two different Americas, but not geographically, but demographically. Each candidate has enormous strengths in different types of Americans. So you looked at the five groups most supportive of Obama and most supportive of Romney, and tell us what you found. Yeah, basically for Obama, it is people of color, anybody who's not white. So African Americans, extremely strong, not a surprise, but Hispanics, and then non-religious people, non-married people, and this is interesting, Americans with postgraduate educations. And it doesn't seem to matter whether it's a PhD or a master's degree or a law degree, uh, Americans, even white Americans with uh, postgraduate degrees are more likely to support Obama. And then you look at the groups that are most strongly for Romney and who would they be? Yeah, it's not the um, to the extremes. Romney doesn't have any one sliver that is as strong, say, as blacks or Hispanics are for Obama, but they're bigger groups that Obama uh, that Romney does better in, and they would be among the highly religious, which is quite interesting, among white Americans, married Americans, older Americans, and then Americans basically that have $36,000 a year in income or on up, not poor Americans. That's where his strength is basically it's white Americans, but also I would say traditional Americans, which is very interesting. Religious, married uh, Americans, particularly who are white, those are the bread and butter, so to speak, of Romney's support. So it really underscores how polarized the nation is politically, that if you're, if you're white uh, by 53% to 38%, you're backing Mitt Romney, but if you're Hispanic by 61% to 29%, you're backing um, Barack Obama, really a difference. That's right. And of course, some of this gets to that question, which you hear all the time, is the object of the campaign to change people's mind or just to increase turnout? And a lot of it's just turnout. 
Now, these groups are pretty well set, so both campaigns are just trying to say, we know you like us, but we're trying to get them out to vote. And, and uh, Obama has the bigger challenge, because some of his groups aren't as likely to vote as some of the groups that support Romney. You need to get your people out, but you need to appeal to some of these persuadable voters in the middle if you're going to get to 50 percent, and neither candidate has done that yet. Issues, by the way, Obama's out talking about, uh, let's extend the Bush tax, tax cuts, except for those over $250,000. Is that rhetoric? Oh, yes. I mean, he's been talking about Not this to be cynical, Susan. For, uh, mm -hmm. for, for six years. Uh, there's, uh, I would say, almost zero chance that this will happen before the election. So it's a talking point. He wants to make sure people know that's where he stands. And then the Republicans, they're going to actually vote on repealing the ACA, the Affordable Care Act, right? And that's they're not going to happen this either. week in the House. Mm -hmm. They won't vote in the Senate. And they'll probably vote to repeal it, and it will die there for the same reason that uh, President Obama wants to talk about. Uh, raising taxes on the wealthy. I think, uh, again, to be a little cynical, both of these groups, Obama, the Republicans, they're out there doing things which aren't really going to have much impact, but it's a way of saying symbolically this is the position I stand for, right? That's Rather than right. actually trying to yep. pass legislation. Right. And now, we talked about the news media. Let's go over that. You're part of the news media. We all are, but we're uh, in our annual confidence and in institution poll have just updated Americans' confidence in a bunch of institutions. And we've you know, said at Gallup.com, the military is at the top. And Congress, by the way, is the lowest confidence of any institution. But we have television news and we have newspapers, and they're not doing all that well, Susan. Well, newspaper, uh, news media is trusted by 25%, lots of confidence in them. That's not great, mm -hmm. but it's better than TV news at 21%, a record low for TV journalists. Yeah, we're going to be reporting this. Our colleague, Lamari Morales, on our site, and she points out that actually these data were taken in on television news before the, what do you want to call it, the uh, goof up by a couple of cable news networks when the Supreme Court was making its announcement of its decision on the Affordable Care Act. And you know, those mistakes by CNN and Fox will not do anything to bolster Americans' views of how much they can trust the news. Yeah, I, we will, don't have time now to get into why confidence is down, and there are a lot of reasons for it, but nevertheless right now Americans don't have a great deal of confidence in the news media, and, and of course they're relying more on blogs and a lot of other kind of things to reinforce their opinions as well. Well, we'll see what happens. The Olympics start the 27th. Final question of July. Will Romney announce his vice president before the Olympics? Uh, well, if he's going to announce it, we think it'll be this week. Really? We think there is some possibility, but I personally think he's more likely to do it right before the convention. Which is traditional. Which that would be the traditional time Yeah, to do which it. would be like yeah. uh, the 24th of August. But there's definitely been a little speculation about an earlier hmm. announcement, and we would expect it to come within the next few days if it's going to happen. And who will that person be? Well, you know, the betting's on Rob Portman, the mm -hmm. senator from Ohio, but there's one person who knows, and his name is Mitt Romney, and he's not telling. Well, maybe we'll be able to talk about the vice presidential uh, candidate announcement next week. We'll maybe wait and so. see. Very good. I'm Frank Newport, Gallup Editor-in-Chief. I'm Susan Page, Washington Bureau Chief for USA Today. And this is Election Matters.